So those are the plans for my picture frame. Um, a friend of ours that we work with left, left already, I'm not done yet. So he left and I decided to go ahead and make a picture frame for a group photo of all of us from this piece of mesquite here, which is actually the very first thing I've milled with the chainsaw mill. And it's also, this is going to be the first thing I've built from something I've milled uh, on that chainsaw mill also. So it's mesquite that I uh, got from where we work. I found it, it was pretty dried out. I'm not exactly sure why I used every power tool in the house to cut this to shape. I could have just drawn a line on it or something and thrown it on the bandsaw and cleaned up both sides that way. I'm not sure why I did this the hard way with the extra steps. I don't know, maybe dramatic effect. So I cut the first side with the DeWalt, cut the second side with the bandsaw, and then ran it across the joiner to face it and give me some, uh, some clean sides there. Cleaned up the opposite side with the table saw. Squared the ends. So the DeWalt planer, I got my Shelix in there, my Wixie digital gauge. Uh, I actually raised the height quite a bit further than I really needed to. But those Shelix cutters are amazing. I got pretty much a ready to go sanded finish right off the bat. So measuring up. Not sure why I struggled with this a little bit, but my biggest challenge here was getting the sizes I needed and avoiding as much of the defects in the wood as possible. It's mesquite, so it's extremely hard to do that. There's lots of cracks and voids and pockets and all kinds of stuff. Whatever you mean, it's in there in all of it. So it's real hard to get a clean piece. I don't want to say I'm book matching right here, but I'm splitting it in two halves. So each half is going to give me two of the sides of the picture frame. Checking the moisture. Just to be sure, I know it's a little too late at this point. Alright, so I'm just cleaning up the bandsaw marks on there. I've just got a simple three-quarter inch Lennox on there right now. I have a really nice one-inch carbide tipped resaw blade but it's broken and I have not gotten around to fixing it or finding a replacement comparable to it yet. So I'm pretty happy with the Lennox but I just don't have that glass smooth surface like I did with my carbide blade which costs roughly 20 times as much money. So marking out the individual pieces again and the miters on there. I struggled with this a little bit at first because my miter gauge was actually a little bit crooked so when I cut the four pieces they didn't line up exactly the way they were and despite checking the moisture ahead of time and knowing well not ahead of time just now despite checking the moisture and knowing it was fairly dry I was still afraid that it was gonna change as it dried uh, a lot of times when you mill wood it shifts so I was hoping that that was the cause and it turns out that it was actually my miter that was wrong so as you can see right here it's actually like 46 and a half degrees or maybe 44 degrees, but it's definitely not 45 degrees. I figured out the problem, made the changes, and then was able to go forward from there with a pretty accurate miter cut. I used the Incra gauge for all my miters, and when it's dialed in correctly, uh, it's extremely accurate, unlike what you're about to see here. Although I might have hit it at that point. So I'm just going to run through the drum sander right now and clean up the edges as a group so that they all match and I don't have one side that's sanded a little bit more than the other one. The Delta X5, I do not recommend you get one. I have still not got this one dialed in exactly and I've had to replace the gears twice. It came with plastic gears, they stripped, I replaced them, they stripped immediately, like literally the first time I tried to use it after that. and then. I had to pay like $150 to get the steel gears that I have in there now, and it seems to be working. It's just the bed's still not level. Cutting the bells on the faces now. I learned the hard way last year to cut the 
miters first and then the bevel because it makes cutting bevels a lot harder. Excuse me, makes cutting the miters a lot harder when you're when you have to reverse the miter gauge every time because one face is already beveled. Neural band clamps are really awesome. You just gotta watch out for your knuckles. It's pretty much uh, just finishing up from here on out. I decided to go ahead and use splines, and this is the first time I used this old Delta tenoning gauge. No. Tenoning jig. To cut splines, and it was amazing. It, it's like I don't even need a spline jig. The, this is all you need. Granted, it's expensive. I got this one at an estate sale for you know, 10 bucks or something. And cutting down these splines to get them to the thickness that I'm looking for. That Wixi thickness gauge is a lifesaver when it comes to this kind of stuff. It's surprisingly accurate. All I gotta do is just dial it down to where I need it, and it does the rest. So I sunk these in with some wood glue, and then trimmed them up with the uh, flush trim bit on the router. That's more mesquite there in the background. I'm talking about that and things like that. Yeah. And my brand, like always. Boiled linseed oil. I somehow ended up with a bunch of it. I think I got a gallon or so from an estate sale, and then I got a gallon for Christmas. So I like using it, and it looks really, really good on mesquite. I'm really happy with the way it accentuates the grain. And I lucked out with the grain pattern on this piece of wood that I used, too. It's really neat. It kind of bows in. I don't know how to describe it. Uh, it looks like curtains, essentially, um, coming from all sides. I put several coats of boiled linseed oil on there. I forgot how many. Yes, that's brushing lacquer. Uh, I thinned it out. It sprays just fine. Uh, I, I have switched to actual spray lacquer after that, though. It's a lot easier to buy gallons from Sherwin Williams. And now I've got a CNC machine, so I decided to go ahead and cut the plexiglass and the backer on the CNC machine, and it gave me a perfect result right off the bat. No trimming necessary. All I did was sand the edges of it. Essentially, it's ready to go right now. I just need the picture. Uh, that's really all I need. The picture and it'll be sealed up and I'm going to have to mail it to him because he's already left. So, thanks for watching. I hope you like it. If you have any questions, please comment below. If you like it, please subscribe, please share, click, all that stuff. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.